in my career, I've worked uh, quite frequently with the fishing community to gather information for uh, resource management and, and conservation issues. Um, in the uh, late 90s, the uh, California passed the Marine Life Protection Act, which called for the implementation of marine protected areas in California. And I was on the uh, science advisory team that first started the planning for the marine protected area process. And along with myself and uh, 17 other researchers in California, one of those researchers was Dean Went from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. We got together over coffee and, and thought up uh, ways that we could help in the marine protected area process while providing information for fisheries management at the same time. The plan we came up with utilized the fishing community in a big way. And there are a couple reasons for that. One is that we recognized uh, through the work that we'd been doing that the fishing community had a lot of information and, and good ideas to share. Two, they know how to catch fish really well. And three, the fishing community is a group of people who are being affected by these management regulations. And we felt that uh, they should have a say in the uh, information that's developed for fisheries management and for marine protected areas. We survey 12 different marine protected areas along the coast of California. We work with volunteer anglers, so we charter commercial passenger fishing vessels and we bring aboard um, a bunch of volunteer anglers that help us conduct the fishing. So we survey inside and outside of marine protected areas and all the fishing is done by our volunteer anglers. We conduct these standardized trips. So we'll fish um, for a given amount of time in a given uh, area inside the MPA as well as outside the MPA. And we're keeping track of the number of fish that we catch, um, the species of fish that we catch, and we're also tagging a subset of those fish prior to their release. Um, and all these data go to help kind of understand or assess differences in the abundance and the lengths of fishes, both inside and outside the MPAs. And with those, the, the tagging data that we, we use, um, so every time a fish is tagged and released, if it's recaptured and reported back to us, we can get further insight on how far those fish are moving, if they're moving outside the MPA, or whether or not they're moving inside the MPA. So we've been trying to evaluate how well uh, the marine protected areas have been doing across the whole state using 15 years of data that we've collected uh, along the Central California coast, and then five years of data uh, as the program expanded to Northern and, and Southern California. And uh, some of the key findings that we found is that in the habitat that we're working in, which is where you know, most of the fishing activity occurs, when you close these areas to fishing, we're seeing big increases in the catch rates and the abundance of many species uh, that are commonly caught um, when you go fishing. We're finding that many of the fishes are also larger in size inside those protected areas. And together, uh, we're finding that there's a much larger biomass or you know, mass of fishes inside these uh, protected areas. Another aspect of the program that we do is, is we occasionally do surveys of the volunteer anglers that come out with our, with our program uh, to get their opinions about uh, the marine protected area network and their perceptions of the MPAs. And we ask them questions about their views on fisheries management and conservation. And one of the really key findings of these surveys is that uh, volunteer anglers that come out with us uh, they have much more positive opinions of the marine protected areas after volunteering with our research program. Uh, we've also found that the longer that people volunteer with our program and the more times they come out with us, uh, the more positive those opinions become of the marine protected area network. Well, I was studying MPAs at the same time that the program began and after reading an article by Tom Steenstra, the Chronicle writer, I saw that uh, the Moss Landing program was starting up and I phoned them and joined the program and subsequently worked as crew member for several years and uh, have learned so much about rockfish as a species as well as meeting many scientists. Well, I've been fishing for 74 years all over the world and I still want the fish to be there when I'm old and in a wheelchair. And all these young people doing all this research 
they're protecting our fish stock. So it's, it, it has to be that way. This program is just this incredible partnership between scientists and um, volunteer fishermen, and it really is an opportunity to get everybody out on the water um, and catching fish that's going to collect uh, data important for how we're going to manage our marine protected areas into the future. I think it's super important to do this work because it is a program that incorporates not just scientists, but it also uh, incorporates a lot of the local fishing community, like your captains who know all the spots and where to fish, and it also incorporates a lot of local fishermen, and it kind of brings together that community and the, sh the sharing of knowledge, and I feel that having that connection really helps in the conservation of a lot of our natural resources because sometimes there's a disconnect between the scientists and the community, and I think Bringing that all together in one place is, is really beneficial for the conservation. I think it's important simply because you see a difference in you know the, the size of the fish uh, that are coming up in the MPAs. Uh, you know, if you get, there's big fish and small fish. You know, at least you know they're breeding. And then the spillover from the MPAs. Uh, a lot of them uh, that are next to the MPAs that are the open access areas. Uh, they're producing you know good quality fish.